Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial. This time it's one for uh, a subscriber request and uh, he was asking, please, can you make a tutorial on neon lights? So I was like, hey, that sounds like a really cool idea. I can kind of mix the concept of emission maps and also the text tool tutorial that I just did, show you guys how to put them all together. So let's start with the text tool. Up here at the top, we have a little text. You can click on the little the T or you can always go to create type. And let's go ahead and just type in something like neon lights. So let's see, one of the things I wanna do is reduce the font size. And actually what I really want is some sort of pretty, like uh, handwriting kind of neon looking light. So something like that would be nice. Um, let's bring the kerning in a little closer just because I like the words being a little closer. It doesn't take up as, long, as much space. And then under geometry, the tab geometry, we want to kind of mess around with the uh, extrusion offset. So if you wanted to continue on, you could just leave it like this, but I like to play with the options. So I'm going to increase my extrusion offset and then I can just kind of play with these little guys. Whoa, that's, just, that's not going to work. Uh, let me reduce this. There we go. Okay. Um, oops, the T still looks crazy. Let's fix that too. There we go. Just, you got to find that happy spot. Um, and then you just kind of mess around with these curves to see which one feels and looks good for you. So I might want something like, let's see, and you might need to increase your extrusion and maybe give yourself a little bit more mesh so that it can give you a nice little curve. Make this bigger. It's kind of like a, a game of like which one is going to look good. Maybe something like this. Oops, I don't like that T is causing me issues. Let's go ahead and reduce that. So now that I have uh, this, let's go back. And I think the kerning is a little too close. There we go. I didn't want any geometry poking out. So at least this looks more um, like cursive. So going back to geometry, I, I always like beveling. So I'm going to go ahead and enable the beveling. And that's a little dramatic. Um, let me decrease the beveling a little bit. And there's, uh, there's different types of bevel you can use. I'm going to try to get something a little curved so that I get a nice beveled edge. All right. So we'll use this. And then what I'm going to do is right click, assign a new material. Let's go to Arnold AI standard surface. And I'm going to choose probably something like, let's do something blue. Usually I go for pink. Anyway, we'll play around. And uh, really neon lights don't really have specularity. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce that and maybe increase the roughness. Um, the magic is actually under emission. So right now, this is what it looks like, which is nothing. There's no lights. So what we can do is increase our emission to one. And then when you render, we now have what looks like light. So then I'm going to grab the color and pick the neon light color. And now I have a neon light. Now that's a little strong. So I might, might want to decrease the, the weight of it. So we get a nice little transition. Now it doesn't look like it's glowing and that T is still giving me issues even though, let me go back. Let me try to fix that. Um, that's too bad. Okay, we'll do it like that. Let's give it a floor so that we can actually see what type of effect it's having. So you'll notice that it does in fact look like it's glowing. So this is one really quick way of getting your objects to look like there's a neon light. Now, if you want that little fuzziness around it, like if it was a neon light has a little glow around it, um, we're gonna have to add some fog. So what we're gonna do is go to the render settings up here. We're gonna go to the Arnold render and open up environment. And in here, I'm gonna choose atmosphere volume, create AI atmosphere volume and increase my density. Let's see what that looks like. You're not gonna see much of an impact when I increase my density because this isn't actually a light. This is, a, this is just a texture that seems to be glowing and it does emit some light, but it's not actually a light source that Arnold can calculate to figure out what to do with. So to, do, to fix that, we're gonna have to turn it into what's called a mesh light. So I'm gonna stop my render, select the mesh, and then up here at the top under Arnold, there's something called lights and then something called mesh light. Well, the first thing I'd like to do is just go ahead and change the color. Well, let's see what it looks like right now. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to press play. So now this has, you can almost see a little bit of a fog. That is actually the fog being affected by the light. There's not much light going on because it's hard to see, 
But what we want to do is maybe change the color to that blue. So now that I change it to blue, you can see that the light, just barely, you can see the, the light is actually there. What we can do is increase the exposure and the intensity to make it brighter. So what I can do is go ahead and increase it. But we still lose, we're getting the fog, but we're still starting to we lose that really cool neon effect. So what I'm going to do is click on Show Original Mesh. And now what I'm getting is that fog around my light source. And I can go ahead and increase my uh, exposure so that it's brighter, so that you can see the fog a little bit more. So let me go back to my render settings. And with my fog, I can go back and either increase my intensity or decrease the density, sorry, density, not the intensity of the fog. Now, how do we just get it to affect just this corner here? And we'll talk about the noise in a second. I can increase my samples here to help with the noise, but that's going to increase my render time. So just keep that in mind. What we're going to do next is to get that glow. So here's my type mesh. I'm going to open it up and there's, that's the actual light source. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to increase my samples of my volume because I'm here. This actually impacts the samples of the fog so that we can get a better quality noise. So you can see that's very noisy. So let's go ahead and increase that for now. And over here, down here at the bottom, I'm going to click on add and I'm going to choose something called light decay. And light decay is going to help me control how much light is emitting from this light source so it doesn't go on forever. I just wanted to kind of just hover around here. So go to AI light decay. And again, I have tutorials on all of this. So if you, uh, if you go back, you'll be able to see the tutorials on light decay. I, I go into it in depth and I also go in depth about the text tool. So uh, just make sure you take a look at those because I'm assuming you've already seen those. Hopefully I'm not going too fast, but I'm, I hopefully you know where, where I'm going with this. Um, let's go ahead and do far attenuation and we'll lose it immediately. So we're going to start messing around with these values. There it is. And if I go to my far end and start decreasing it, I can actually control how far the glow is uh, occurring with the light. So maybe that's a little too low so I can, or just can make it a little bit tighter. So now the decay, the light doesn't go on forever. What it does, it actually decays a lot closer and I get to control of that in like a gradient. So right now I'm telling the gradient to just end right around here. In this case, it's like 20 units. So you can see that I'm getting this nice little glow. Going back to my light, we're still getting a lot of noise and it did finish rendering. So we're gonna definitely have to increase our values, but uh, let's go ahead and increase our intensity some more. So we're getting a nice little glow around our light source. Uh, I'm gonna change my exposure to four just to make things easier or uh, just even. And then I'm going to increase my samples here as well to four. So all of this is going to add extra elements into my scene. So maybe I'm getting some interesting noise. So I'm going to reduce this to three. Let me reduce my samples to three as well. Cool. And now that we've increased our samples and we're getting that nice fog, I'm going to double check to make sure my fog is sample all the way to one so that's good sometimes you can increase it to more no in other areas you could um if you wanted to you can change the fog color as well so if you wanted to go a little bit more blue so you can just kind of continue adding these colors and finally let's go ahead and try to get rid of some of this noise so again the default is it renders pretty quickly but if we want to have nice quality renders, we really need to increase our samples. So I'm going to go ahead and increase my sample camera to four. Volume direct, I'm going to go ahead and increase that to four because that's basically uh, the, the fog that I'm getting. And just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and do three. Decrease my specularity to one. I really don't need specularity. We'll see if that... Actually, I'll just leave it back at two. And um, there's no transmission, so I don't have to worry about that. And of course, I always enable adapted sampling and decrease it to about maybe a seven because 20 is a lot. And I'm going to stop it for a second because I actually want to get a little closer. You can turn on this uh, camera settings so you know exactly where it's going to be. And then we can kind of watch it. It's kind of interesting that it's getting this blue. I'm thinking about pushing it a little bit more. I can always add a little point light. This point light is also going to pick up the fog. So again, I'm just going to make sure that it's uh, it's got that blue and maybe just slightly darker and I'm going to render that and I like to hide my lights just to see what type of effect it has so this is the 
the current light that I have. And if I want to, I can go ahead and increase the intensity a little bit just so I can get that fog. Now, again, the light's going to go on for a while, so I need to go into Arnold. I'm going to go into light filter, add the light decay, and very similar to the light decay, I'm going to use my far attenuation and probably use the val same value of 20, maybe 15. So I get this nice little glow as well. So it's kind of like building on it. Um, I want to make sure that it makes you know sense. And then if I want to, let's go ahead and increase the intensity to three. Uh, always increase your samples. And because we are using fog, I'm going to go ahead and increase my samples, my volume samples as well. And uh, then I'm going to duplicate this and just kind of make sure that it's around. So the quality of the render is going to be a little bit better. Whoops, did I not duplicate it? You can see that there's a little speck right there, so I'm going to have to go into my... i got to add my light decay to every light so it doesn't duplicate it. That's too bad. Um, let's go ahead and do this one again. This one's going to be 20. And I'm just going to make a selection here so I can see what I'm doing. And then the... and then... i got to find that right value. Maybe 3. Two, so this helps with getting that hot spot out of there. One, let's go to two. Two seems to be a good number. Cool. So now that I have that, I could do the same thing to point light number one. Grab light decay, use this, and since I kind of already know the value, I'm going to press two, and then I've got that hot spot disappear. So that's kind of convenient. And uh, let's go ahead and bring back the other light source. So shift H, press play, and you can see that we're getting a little bit more of that intense light here. So, which is nice because we probably, that's probably the, a little bit more of the look that we want. So I'm going to duplicate another light, move it over here. Again, add a light decay. We kind of already know the value. So this is going to be two. This one's going to be 15. Press play, and now we're getting a little bit more of that light glowing look. So there's multiple ways of how to tackle neon lighting. Let me, it might be better if I actually have a floor or something in the back. Let me grab a face here. Ooh. Let me grab these light, make sure that they're actually, let's see what that looks like. So sometimes it's easier to see this if you have a background. So you can see how it affects it. There we go. Now it's really looking like a neon light just because it's, it's, it's hitting something on the background. Press stop and sorry, I just, it's one of those things that I'm just like, oh, I'm just going to keep working on it. I'm going to make this thinner so that it looks skinnier. And yeah, I mean, that's part of my problem being uh, an artist is that I like to tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak until I'm happy. It's not a bad thing. It's just that it takes a lot of time and it's just a little dark. So I'm going to add a, uh, let's see what happens if I add a physical sky, but I'm going to really reduce the intensity of this sky. So I got my sky dome. I just want like a, just a little bit of light. Oops. That's not what I wanted. Well, it looks kind of cool. This is what it looks like on daylight. Um, I really just wanted a little, just like a hint of light so we can see the, the neon a little bit better. Cool. All right. Let me move this a little bit so I can see. All right. So basically I'm almost done. Um, I do want a better render. So I'm going to scroll down to my comment tab in my render settings scroll down and I'm going to choose something a little bigger 720 I could go higher but um, again everything's looking pretty good if anything I might want to crank up some of my Arnold settings even more but let's just go ahead and render and and that's basically how to quickly create a neon light we actually covered a lot we went over text tool we went over fog we also went over light filters and uh, the emission maps and everything so it's actually pretty neat 
what you can create using Arnold's lighting. So I hope that was helpful and uh, uh, informational. If you guys have any other recommendations, go ahead and leave a comment below. And uh, if I have uh, the time, I'll definitely try to create it for you guys. So thank you so much again for listening. Well, this renders, I might as well just kind of chat with you guys a little bit. But don't forget to take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can get free downloads, eBooks, 3D models, all sorts of stuff. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. And also, if you find this helpful, please share and like and also subscribe. It really helps me want to keep pushing forward and making more tutorials like this for you. So thank you again for listening. I'm going to go ahead and pause and let this thing render, and then I'll be right back. There it is. It's still a little bit noisy. I might want to increase my render settings, but that should give you an idea of how to create a neon light. So thank you so much for listening. Keep creating, everybody, and I will see you next time.